Okay, so it's now December, and with December comes Christmas, and with Christmas comes uh, unrealistic wishes and expectations. And while this year I, I didn't ask for a pony, um, the one unrealistic expectation that I might have that some of you may also have is 32-bit float in-camera audio recording. And so there's been a lot of speculation online and rumors flying around that DJI might enable 32-bit float audio within their cameras, specifically the uh, Osmo Pocket 3 and hopefully, fingers crossed, DJI Osmo Action 4. And part of that is because they rolled out 32-bit float internal recordings on the DJI Mic 2, meaning that they have plans to incorporate 32-bit float in their audio plans. And so right now, at this very moment, there are thousands of people out there who are uh, getting their feet wet when it comes to 32-bit floating point recording. And, uh, and the speculation and misunderstanding of whether or not their cameras record 32-bit float audio. And so I want to have a discussion with you about the potential for cameras, specifically DJI cameras, to record 32-bit float audio within their cameras, why it may or may not be realistic, and why it's my biggest Christmas wish this year. Um, disclaimer, these are all my opinions and thoughts and speculations and understanding of how things might work. I could be off base on any number of things that I say in this video, and if I am or you want to contribute to this discussion, drop a comment down below because I read all of them and I take them all into consideration when I make future content. So um, first off, let's talk about why there isn't 32-bit floating point audio recordings in cameras currently. And that's for a couple different reasons. One, uh, in order to record in 32-bit float, generally you need to have extra components, audio components, and those are typically the additional analog to digital conver converters needed to take an analog audio signal and convert it into digital information. And so um, in a lot of 32-bit floating point recording uh, or 32-bit float audio devices, they have multiple uh, analog to digital converters and they stack and overlap so that you don't have to set your gain within a per one parameter. Two converters cover a wider gamut or three or four cover a larger uh, dynamic range. So you don't have to make those gain adjustments to fall within one of those brackets because you got a couple others that got you covered. Having those additional components inside of a camera when the camera's main function is to capture video and photos takes up a lot of extra added space within the body that, um, that may or may not be feasible. Plus, most camera companies don't have the same kind of audio technology that straight up audio companies might have. And so they don't, they'd have to partner potentially with some audio company to take their technology and insert it into their camera. Additionally, when it comes to writing digital audio, file formats like MP4 uh, write compressed audio, which means that they don't write in a 16, 24, 32-bit float um, bit depth. And so in order to have 32-bit float audio, you need to record it as a WAV file in camera and not like incorporate it as the audio track within an MP4 file. Although I do think that maybe MOV files encode 32-bit floating point audio, but I, I, I'm not exactly sure, so don't quote me on that. So those are the two big barriers, I think, for cameras to have 32-bit float internally. One, they need extra components to make that, that uh, conversion possible. And two, they need to write additional file formats, not just one video file format. So when it comes to DJI, the reason why I think a lot of people are excited is because just a few days ago, with the latest firmware update for the Pocket 3, they released the ability to have backup WAV file recordings of the internal microphones of the camera while using an external audio device. And while it might not seem like a big deal, to those of us who uh, are really big audio enthusiasts, yeah, it is, because it is 
a function and feature that I would love to see in my Action 4, which I'm shooting on right now, having the ability to have separate audio WAV files in addition to the baked in audio into the MP4 video track so that I have those backups to manipulate as I see fit and, and just have them, you know, hanging out in the background. And this isn't a new thing. GoPro has been doing, have been doing this with their cameras, like at least since the GoPro Hero 8, because you can record uh, multiple raw tracks and you can enable that feature. And so it's not something new, but it's something that new for DJI. But the WAV file format that I think this, they spec is 16-bit, 48 kilohertz. And so when it comes to recording in 32-bit float, there's, there's a big difference that I think a lot of people don't seem to understand. And that is there is a difference in recording a 32-bit float recording and recording a 32-bit float audio file. So if you're recording in 32-bit float, you are taking advantage of those multiple AD converters and then writing that information, you know, as you see fit into the into a file. If you record into a 32-bit float file, you're just recording extra information that you don't have. So the container is a 32-bit float wave container, but it doesn't necessarily mean that it contains all the information that might be included in an actual 32-bit float recording. So that there's this distinction that has to be made because when it comes to recording in camera, I think there are those are the two different options that camera companies could go with with regards to 32-bit float. If they are wanting to record 32-bit float all internally themselves and have those multiple analog to digital converters and then do that file writing themselves, that's actually 32-bit float recording. And then what you download off of your camera, off of your SD card, is a 32-bit float WAV file. But if they're writing just WAV files, they can write them as 32-bit float files and rely on something else to do that analog to digital conversion to be sent to the camera to be written as a 32-bit float file. So what that means in practical terms is that for cameras like the Pocket 3 and Action 4 to record 32-bit float internally as a separate WAV file, remember not in their video file because that's not something that can be done at this point in time or is widely adopted, um, they either need to have this extra analog to digital conversion technology converters inside their cameras currently so that they take their internal microphones, make that conversion inside the camera, and then write it as a 32-bit float file, or they just enable 32-bit float file format recording. And that is something that, this is the exact same thing that happened with the Rode Wireless 2 system, where the files were written as 32-bit float files, even though they weren't recorded as 32-bit float files. So, if DJI enables their cameras, like the Pocket 3 and the Action 4, and maybe even the Action 3, to write 32-bit float files, and you have a device, an external audio device, that inputs, uh, that outputs 32-bit float, you ostensibly could use that audio device that does the conversion, sends the digital information as 32-bit float, and the camera records it as a 32-bit float WAV file. Now, to my knowledge, there are only two devices currently on the market um, that do that, that output 32-bit float. Even though there are a myriad of devices that record internally in 32-bit float, there are only two to my knowledge, and I could be wrong, but to my knowledge, there are only two that output 32-bit float. And that those two are the um, Rode NT the Rode NT1 5th generation, which has a USB-C 32-bit float output, and the Zoom UAC232 audio interface, which outputs 32-bit float. And so 
right now, those two devices are kind of limited in their ability to um, take advantage of 32-bit float because they have to be connected to a computer that has compatible 32-bit float you know, capabilities within a certain software or, or DAW or DAW. But if DJI were to adopt that protocol and enable 32-bit float wave recording via USB-C and you output something that into your camera, that is one potential way that you could be recording 32-bit float in your camera natively. Um, I don't think that that's going to happen though because that relies solely on other companies to uh, create devices or modify their devices to output 32-bit float digitally via USB-C. And um, so it wouldn't make sense that DJI would just blanketly, blanketly, you know, make their cam- let their cameras write 32-bit float with the hopes that someone else will come along to facilitate the rest of the process. What might be more, reason- more feasible is if DJI comes up with their own 32-bit float adapter or device that connects up to their cameras. So say, for example, DJI has an external USB-C audio adapter that contains multiple analog to digital converters inside of it. So when you plug in your 3.5 millimeter TRS analog microphone, it does it has multiple converters and that plugs via USB-C into your camera. And then the camera does all that work and writes a 32-bit float file. That in my mind would be the way like the way that it would work today where there is some kind of device that doesn't have to be a 32-bit float recorder like uh, you know like a zoom f3 which is a standalone 32-bit float recorder this would just have the 32-bit float components and the camera would act as the recorder part of that of that signal chain and so in my mind, if it was Christmas and we were having a great time and I got everything I wanted for Christmas, uh, there would exist an adapter that did this. Now, when it comes to the Pocket 3, this, is a, this could be a reality, right? The Pocket 3 doesn't have a TRS input and it could be intentional for this very reason, because DJ is anticipating releasing some kind of 3.5 millimeter TRS adapter to USB-C that contains multiple analog to digital converters that will enable 32-bit float recording within their camera. But my wish upon wishes for Christmas, and if, if this happens, it's a Christmas miracle, is for the same thing to apply to the Action 4, because well, because that's the camera I have, but also because the cameras, I believe, are similar in their makeup and they were released at similar times. And so the functionality of the Pocket 3 and Action 4, while a little bit different, I think, because, you know, one has stabilization, one has the gimbal, I think their internals are most likely similar, meaning that they most likely handle audio the same way, meaning that whatever the Pocket 3 does, potentially the Action 4 can do as well, including, fingers crossed, being able to take the DJI Mic 2 and receive a signal without having to plug in an external receiver. And so my big Christmas wish, though, is for DJI to push out a firmware update where all of this happens, right? Where they enable... 32, where they enable separate WAV file recordings on the Action 4, like they just did on the Pocket 3, that that file format is 32-bit float, and that, let me see, yeah, where's my, where's my guy? (laughs) That, that this guy, the Osmo Action audio adapter, ah, 
somehow has two, at least two analog to digital converters inside of it that allow for an external audio source to be converted into a 32-bit float recording into their camera. Does that seem actually reasonable and or feasible? Without cracking this open and not knowing what the inside components are, probably not, right? Because inside of this in, inside of this adapter, you're talking about putting in multiple analog to digital converters, um, as well as a full 3.5 millimeter TRS jack, as well as a USB-C jack input and USB-C output. So that's a lot of that's a lot of components to pack into this little device, but speculation here it could be why this device is bigger than what people actually wanted it to be and it could be why this device is more expensive than what people actually wanted it to be because it contains functionality that has yet to be uh, unlocked or revealed by DJI so that is my pseudo rant slash speculation slash conspiracy about 32-bit float and the current lineup of DJI cameras. If you have something to add or uh, want, to, want to challenge me on some of these thoughts, feel free to drop them down in the comments below. Uh, thanks so much for watching, and we'll talk again real soon.